Welcome to the Automators Podcast with your host, Jackie Stook and Joe Glines. Hey guys, today we're going to be covering seven productivity tips for developers. Yeah, yeah, we really, really love these productivity tips, so we're really happy to share them with you. Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here out of Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. And uh, as we mentioned, we're going to cover seven productivity tips for developers. Uh, the first one is uh, interesting, you know, and it's something you wouldn't really think about, but when you look at programmers, especially long-term programmers, it, it makes a lot of sense because often they're hunchbacked and their, you know, necks are extended. It's it's actually a fairly physically demanding, you know, thing to do. It's not, don't get me wrong, it's, I'm not calling it a sport, right? You're not going to see these guys out on the Olympics, but... You know, when when you sit in front of a computer all day, um, it is it's wearing on you and in, in your eyes and everything. So, um, getting up, walking outside, taking a break. I like to go out and get in the sunshine a little. You know, drink lots of fluids. Uh, but yeah, don't just sit there at the computer for hours and hours and hours of time. No, I, I'll totally support that because yeah, it, I know it's a big thing also here in Denmark at the workplace and not getting. Uh, I don't know what you call it, but mouse elbow or whatever, uh, mm -hmm. stuff like that, where you just sit and do the exact same thing. And that's even if you're programming and you're just typing or, or you're really in the zone, but still with that, keeping it uh, to um, some kind of time frame. fair enough. Do work on whatever you're working on, stay on it for an hour, two, three, whatever. But after that, don't, <laughs> don't really put yourself down. Get up, get over, get something to drink, go out, walk, whatever. Just make sure you take those breaks, get those fluids. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, and, but to the point also, right, don't, if you're in the zone, you know, and you've been going for 20 minutes, don't say, I got to stop and take a break. <laughs> right? It's, it's just uh, don't get stuck there for four hours or eight hours and realize, you know, you haven't even eaten a meal or taken a drink of water, right? It's, it's really taxing. Yeah. Yeah. Because, hey, you're, you're supposed to be able to do it again tomorrow and the day after that and so on and so forth. That's a good point, Jackie. It's uh, you're in a marathon, not a sprint, right? Yeah. I, I've heard that several times from people in different contexts, but that's a really good way to think about it. Yeah. Yeah. But, and, and the next one on the list, um, have a get it done attitude, right? Don't keep working on something just for the sake of it. The open source culture and stuff like that, keeping polishing code and never finishing or getting paid for that matter. If, if you don't get it done, it, it's really hard to actually get to that payday. I, I have this issue myself. Actually, being at a point with my code, my program, whatever, where I'm ready to release it, I, it it's, it's, it's really a pain point where I know that I need to tweak that. I, I read to, I'll just refactor this over here and then it'll be much better. And ah, this, it doesn't look well. I'll, I'll, I'll retype this and oh, oh, you know what? I just researched that. If, if I implement that, it'll be much better. Yeah, yeah, uh, to, to get it done attitude, if, if you can get that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's funny because I was going to say, and I could be wrong on this, but as far as I know, there's no Emmys for code, right? Like, you're not going to finally finish it and share it with people and have everyone go, oh, like, that's so amazing. It's beautiful. I mean, it just doesn't happen. Uh, it, and, and people often get caught up in the saying, especially when you're working on something that for whatever reason isn't isn't your job, right? Like it's more of a hobby or, you know, or it is your job, but if you're an entrepreneur and man, it's easy to, to get lost in that because no one is saying, Hey, stop working on this. We got to get, we got to move on to the next thing, right? It's you. And uh, it's just easy to, to keep digging down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Um, well, the next one, it's, it's somewhat related, but the, the whole kiss strategy, right? Keep it simple. Stupid is how it's always referred to in, in America. Um, there can be in programming, 
hundreds upon hundreds of ways to get things done, right? The the different ways you can attack a solution, it's crazy. In auto hotkey too, I think this is a, a thing of like, there's what, five, at least five different types of loops, I think. Uh, yeah. um, in that, you know, honestly, I got to say, when I first started programming in Python, um, I hated it, not hated it, but it really didn't like it. And, uh, and I realized later it's a blessing, right? Because you learn one way to do something. And yeah, you're limited because, hey, well, we just have this one way to do a loop. But you know what? It works because you get used to it and you get faster and it's easier to digest and you come back and look to it and other people can read it because that's what they're used to as well. So yeah, I think keeping it, you know, finding a way to do something and keep using that way um, and not, I mean, it, it, it don't get stuck with something that's, that's 30 years old too and never refactor, but um, just, you know, f once you find a good way to do something, stick with it. Yeah, absolutely. Because again, if, if you can keep some kind of consistency throughout your thing, then it doesn't become unmanageable, right? You, you have a way to reuse your code. You can get um, other people to understand what you did. Um it's okay if you like to show off your code or your skill and stuff like that, but but fair enough. Uh, it, it, it really is a good way of getting it done in a consistent way so that people can follow along. Um, so yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, let me let me chime back in on that, Jack, because we, we, um, that video we watched the other day where he was talking about how some coders Try, it's almost like they try to do stuff to, to show off how smart they are, right? And they obfuscate code. I, I want to say subconsciously, but it, and it makes no sense. I was going to say subconsciously on purpose, which of course is you know an oxymoron. Mm -hmm. But um, I think people, programmers, will do this. They'll say they're not trying to do it. You know, well, it's just easier for me to read. Well, it, it is because you're in the mindset right then and there. But at some point, you know, when you work on something else and you come back to it, even when it's your own code, it's it's hard to get back into. Um, so yeah, so yeah. keep it uh, uh, easy to read. It makes a huge difference. Yeah, and again, okay, it's easy for you to read. And if you're really is, if you're really consistent and you always write it that way, Good point. fair enough, it might right. be easy for you. And if you're the only one who are supposed to work on it, that's fair enough. But I'd say uh, if we go to point four as well, a consistent way to get in the zone, right? So if you're used to, to writing stuff a specific way, or if you know that if I do this, I don't know, take on your slippers or bring a coffee, coffee, or put on a specific type of music, whatever way you have to get in the zone, right? Um, making sure you take out a chunk of code right? or time, not code, yeah. chunk of time where it's, just you, it's just you being productive, um, where you ain't interrupted every 10, 20 minutes. And I know I have this problem at work. Uh, people would come in left and right. And, oh, yeah. can you help me with this? Uh, this isn't working. Um, oh, you remember that thing? Hey, do you wanna grab a cup of coffee? Whatever it might be, right? It, it's, yeah. it can be really, really hard to, to get that, um, block of, uh, of time where where it ain't disturbed. And in that aspect, working from home has actually been a blessing. I'm still getting lots of phone calls and emails and stuff like that, but it's easier to carve out a piece of time where I'm just productive. That that's that's been been a blessing. Yeah, um I, I mentioned earlier that uh one of my the guys I try to uh use as an idol to, to emulate uh, Dan Kennedy. He has a whole book on this, this basic concept, but um, he talks about time vampires, right? And it's, it's how people, some people, you know, you know, right when they walk up, you're like, oh crap, right? There goes, you know, at least 30 minutes or an hour because they just keep talking and talking and talking. Um, but yeah, so back into get, getting, finding a way to get in your zone. Um, what I'll do, and actually Jackie, you saw earlier when, when I went to get my phone, it was, it's over there, right? It wasn't even next to me. And I often purposely do that, keep it away from me. So I'm not, I don't pick it up and start playing with it, right? And it's just, it's its a thing that you can do is set yourself in a way, um, you know, shut down your email, you know, don't look at Facebook. You actually, Jackie, you used to have a script or something that would stop you from looking at Facebook, right? Or something like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, all right, anyway, uh, that was the point. What was that? Uh, 
four. So number five, um, absolutely always be learning, you know, sharpening yourself. Uh, it's, it's just an easy way to, um, to go to what you know, but learn other things, right? Learn, you know, work with other people, learn, learn other approaches for doing things. And it's kind of funny because we also say, you know, get, uh, find a way to do something, get it done. But it's easy to um, just get familiar with the way you take an approach. And then at some point you, you get, I'm trying to think of what's the right term, not outdated, but um, you can miss out on things, right? Of better approaches, right? So always keep trying to learn, um, you know, stay, stay at the top of your field. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a really good idea. And it, it can be hard uh, in some aspects, and at least if, if you're in maybe a corporate setting where where you get jobs that come in or tasks that keep coming in and they might need about the same um, type of code or the same kind of work every time, sure enough, it will be hard if you're time-pressed to keep sharpening yourself. Again, you might want to use some of your free time on it then depending on whoever or whatever you're doing. Uh, but yeah, using the ways to learn, and that could be using courses, using YouTube, using uh, a mentor, the, lots of stuff like that to, to keep yourself sharp in whatever field you're in. Um, always do that. And um, our point six here, collaboration. Work with others, if you can, right? Uh, we, we believe that a lot of the people in the community that we usually frequently come uh, across, people are working by themselves. Many people are automating their own tasks, uh, which is great, but it also means that they're keeping it to themselves. A lot of the people we've talked to might not even have told their manager or whoever it might be that they're doing it or they're self-employed and have done their own thing, but they've never reached out to anybody. So it, depending on how big the thing you're doing is, uh, if it's small, then reach out to learn or to have someone to have the, uh, your language of choice in common with or whatever it might be, or get a mentor if you can. Stuff like that it will really help uh, if you don't have a big project to collaborate on. Yeah, no, I totally agree with, with all of that. Um, it's, it's funny with the, you know, you often with the, my employees that will be doing stuff, I'll spend half my time listening to them code. Like they'll be doing stuff and I'll be listening. I'll be doing other stuff. And then I'll say like, well, why don't we just do this? And, and often, even though they're better programmers than me, they're like, Oh, Oh, I hadn't thought of it that way, right? And it's just because we think differently, right? That like when you hear other people, you get caught in a certain way of doing stuff and other people even, they, they like I said, it, it has nothing to do with your level of expertise. It's just your brain was going a certain direction and someone else that wasn't thinking from the same perspective can give you an idea. You're like, wow, I never would have thought of that. Um and uh, yeah, it's just, why not, right? It's, it, it, it's really helpful to, you know, bounce ideas off of other people and get their perspective. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you can do it. Yeah. yeah. So the next one we're talking about, you know, hey, programming is a, it's a lonely activity, right? Um, it, it's, this is just more of a be aware of that it's, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time <laughs> working in silence. But you know, when I say silence, just meaning you're not talking to other people. Right. Um, because it's, 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 it's really when I'm like, when I mentioned earlier, when I'm on a call with other people, I can't do programming when the other person is talking, I can look at emails and I can respond to an email while people are doing stuff, but I can't concentrate on other things when people are talking. Right. And so, um, it's really hard when someone's programming and talking like for me to, to write anything, I just can't do it. Um, but yeah. so purposely plan time to have some time where you do connect with other people. Cause it's, it's very important as a human to just feel, you know, like you're not, not some rogue person off on your own Island. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of contradicting all of these things. We say right. consistent way of getting in the zone, 
taking time for yourself. And this goes well with, with number seven here, programming is a lonely activity because most programmers will agree that you need some kind of um, stable environment when you're doing this. Uh, it, not everybody needs it to be absolutely quiet or anything like that. But again, they are not supposed to be interacted with directly in the effect that, oh, you need to decide on something or whatever it might be. So, so you could probably do most of your coding from home or your basement or wherever you want to mm -hmm. put people uh, when they do stuff like that. Uh, so when people say they want to be a programmer or where can I go to be a programmer, not all of them had thought it through. Uh, as a programmer, you will have hours upon hours uh, of your uh, work week or however you put it, uh, where it's just you. So you, you might not uh, be cut out for that if, uh, if you need uh, people, person to person interaction every few minutes or whatever it might be. So yeah. Yeah, but again, that's number seven. Our number eight is... Uh, it's the bonus one because we had, this was yeah. a seven productivity tips, but, but, yeah. but we have an eighth. Yeah, and it's use uh, a tool, right? Like uh, hot strings without a hot key, quick assets pop up, et cetera, whatever uh, kinds of snippets uh, or tools you can use to kind of up your productivity. Um, whichever it might be, switch keys, or you can choose all kinds of stuff, but by using a tool, uh, for stuff that you would either use uh, even seconds on. It, it's amazing how many um, seconds people use on typing the same thing. And again, if you want to use um, something to remember your uh, passwords or something to remember all the emails you usually write to, or it could be something else. I don't know exactly what people keep writing. It it could be that account number they always keep writing or uh, the phone number in the dialing app, or it could be all kinds of different stuff. But why are people typing it in? I'm, I'm seeing <laughs> time and time again, people typing uh, almost large amounts of text instead right. of copy pasting, which right. to me is just like, Oh, okay. The, the chance of you actually misspelling it or having to retype part of it and stuff like that, when uh, you could use different type of tools to make the copying even easier, if you don't want to sit there and try and drag and hit it correctly with your mouse cursor or whatever it might be. So, yeah, uh, actually, so if we were to add a, even a ninth, it would be to to, to basically state, you know, go steal right? Copy, like what most programmers do, don't feel guilty anyway. Most people don't write stuff from scratch. Go find someone else that's already solved your problem and copy it, right? And paste it in. Now, the point being around with either hot strings or QAP or quick access pop-up, something like that, is it's an easy way to store that template, right? So you have it at the tips of your fingers. So when you do need it for the things that you use a lot, you're not hand typing out these long chunks of, or saying, well, I know I did this back in March of some year when I worked on that one program. So I'm going to go find where I did it there and go borrow from it. Um, now, clearly, if it's something that's not used that regularly, then that's fine. You don't have that in your templates. But for things that you use regularly, um, why not have a tool that brings that thing up, you know, at the tips of your fingers and has it already, you know, defined for you? Yeah, and absolutely. The thing is with hot strings, they make a lot of sense if you use them enough. Mm -hmm. Whereas stuff like uh, a quick access pop-up or anything others like that, where you actually have both a graphical um, representation and stuff, and you have a piece of text to remind you of it. Um, and because it's not standalone, you, you don't have that one hot string to remember, but you have that one action that will bring up a, a type of menu that you can select from. More importantly, uh, with, to your point though, Jackie, a structured menu with sub-levels so you yeah. can organize, right? And that's what for me has been the lifesaver is I can 
subgroup and subgroup and then put them in a way that makes sense to me so that organization it, it helps me yeah. sorry for cutting off that's, that's fine but yeah i think that was uh, about the tips we had for now yeah um don't forget to, to like and subscribe i hope you enjoyed that yeah comment if you can and all that stuff uh, it, all of it helps cheers yeah, bye. I hope you enjoyed that podcast. We found it very informative. And don't forget, make sure you like, subscribe, and share this so you know we get more views and know we're doing what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Hey, if we don't hear what you think, how are we to know what to change? So thank you. If you enjoyed that episode of the Automators Podcast, you might also like this one. Hey, everybody. So today we're going to tell you 10 tips of how to hire someone to automate your work or automate your process or your task, you know? So, yeah. All right, let's get going.